My first ever tablet was the Samsung Tab A with S Pen. Around seven years ago, I purchased this from Curry's for just under £200. Tablets now come in a vast range of prices, but they've got a lot faster and a lot more useful. In universities, they've become an essential item for study, especially in mathematics. We have to write the mathematical notation, and anyone who's tried to type mathematical notation knows just how much slower it is. You no longer have to worry about carrying folders and masses of paper, and you have an all-in-one entertainment device that slips into your bag and goes with you so it's ready for study anywhere. After the initial success of the S Pen many years ago, uh, which we'll get into later when I talk about the S Pen and how good it is, Samsung have decided to include the S Pen on more and more of its devices, and for good reason. This includes their amazing Galaxy Notebook laptops, which are like two-in-ones, and also the Galaxy Folding Phone, which both these devices make use of S Note and technology of the S Pen, and would work as excellent two-in-one tablets. But here, in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the features on a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, which is the one that I use in education in the classroom and also to make YouTube videos. I like to have my professional work separate from other devices. And so a dedicated tablet was the best option for me. But if you're looking to slim down on devices or even maybe save some money, or maybe you appreciate the different features of different devices, then you may want to consider some of these two-in-one options. So one of the first things I want to discuss is the S Pen. And if you hover over, can you see the dot? Not sure if you can on the recording, but a dot appears on the screen when you're not even touching the screen, just so you can line it up. It's so accurate. And if you press the button that's on the side of the pen at this point, you'll see a lot of different things that you could do with it. And I'll talk through some of them. One of the things you can use it for is Bluetooth pen uh, for your PowerPoint. Let's say you're giving a presentation, you can use it and click the pen to move the PowerPoint. And there are certain gestures that you use much like a, a wand. And then you get to command your PowerPoint from a distance, which obviously is, is great. And the one thing about this pen is it charges when it's on the side of the tablet. When it doesn't have any charge, it still works as a pen just doesn't do the fancy Bluetooth stuff. That's different from Apple. If you have one of their pens and it runs out of battery, you can't use it at all. Another difference here is that the Apple pen, you have to pay for it 120 pounds. It doesn't come with the tablet, but with the S pen, it will come with the tablet. So some of these are quick notes. So create a note is quick note. Then we've got view all your notes. So you go straight to them. Smart select is one of the most useful. But if you just want a quick screen write, it does a very similar thing. So let's click on Smart Select, and we'll select any part of the screen, any document, anything you might be doing. And you have some options down the bottom. You can draw on the top of it before sending it, which is the link button. Or you can save it on the right here with this Save button. The first one will be an auto select a relevant area. But this Draw on the Top function allows you to draw on the top and then you still get the same options to share or save afterwards. We can undo that. And we just go back um, to discard anything that we did. We can copy it up the top or we can pin it somewhere useful. Copying is, is very good if you're going straight to another program, but let's say typically we'll just download it and we can use that later in any document. We can, we can share it. Um, so we've got that share button with all the typical shares uh, that you can experience. This has been really useful in creating documents or referencing books. If you need to just pull out a quote, you can access the menu again by clicking on this hovering button here. So not necessarily the button on the pen. Uh, and with screen write is very similar, but it said it takes the whole screen. Um, and then you write on the whole screen, you save it or share it. Live message is just something that you send to other people with a Samsung and it will show you the strokes that you use to make that message. So you can make like an animation message if, if you want. AR Doodle is, is just a bit of fun. Translate what you're looking at, it's really good, um, etc. So you can actually add more of these. I've never used Pen Up, but you can add quite a lot that I haven't even played with yet uh, to quick access, even apps that you want to use. 
um, magnify, for example, for ease of use. Okay, so the, that's a really useful tool to look at. Let's look at the actual thing that I want to look at to begin with, which is the S note. Okay, now we're in S note. I just fired it up from the icon and I've created a folder so that you can't see any other folder, but you could do everything you want inside. So everything is based on folders and subfolders. On the top right, you can import a PDF, which means you've saved the PDF like a file, like um, an exam paper or any PDF sent to you that you've converted from a Word document, a worksheet, something like that. And immediately it will turn into a, a note for you. We can create a folder from here and we can say that these are going to be our exams. You can give it any color you wish and you can add that folder there. And then you click on the folder and then you can add a note. Down the bottom right is where we start writing a new note. You press the bottom right here and we get with a, a very comprehensive interface. We've got our pen system, which we can use different pens, different sizes, may even make it look like a real pen here, different color palettes, etc., and favorites. You can highlight text. So if I wrote something and then highlighted that, it goes behind the text, you see? Rubber, you can rub this out by area or by specific stroke. I generally go by stroke eraser because it's quicker and you get rid of everything. If you're writing with a pen, you can actually press the button on the pen, on the pen itself and then it turns into the rubber. So it could be quick to, let's say you made a mistake with the eye, oh, quickly get rid of it and, and start again. You've also got three major colors. So you're making notes in the lecture and uh, you want to highlight something as you carry on. You can do that with different colors, uh, make your notes even better. So if you hold down the pen, it will turn what you draw into a shape. So we could draw a square, like we don't pull it off of the tablet, but when we finished it, same with the triangle, I hold it, and there's a triangle. Um, it does a number of different shapes that you may not expect, but it could be really useful when drawing straight lines for a graph, because you don't have to be as accurate as you think. Um, and then you've got a way you go. <laughs> Some shapes you just can't be helped for, but, um, and you could turn what you scribble into writing with this one. So we could say, hello, and then it will recognize that and turn it into script for us. So in this case, now what we have is actual text writing. And to get to writing mode, you can just click the keyboard and then away you go with writing. You can carry on um, or delete it. We've got different things here and we can select to and move them around. So we didn't quite make it where we wanted. Uh, that could be really useful if you're doing 3x plus 2, 3 equals x, but is you wanted it somewhere else, so you wanted it over here. So you can rearrange what you're doing. We can make notes for as long as we want, and we can save it and send it to people. Let's uh, say hello, and we'll call it um, hi, which you can write with the pen and it turns it to and then we want to save this we want to send this to someone so we go back and now it's ready to send to somebody hold a finger down and share that one and as you can see we can share these notes via uh, samsung note files as a pdf a word file a microsoft powerpoint file where all of the pages are just the pictures of each page that you have in yours an image file and a text file um, especially if you're a professional and you're wanting to share these as PDFs, you make a worksheet on here and then send it, or you can have your notes and share them uh, with classmates, etc. Something really cool is this clip up here. We can insert things. So let's say we were in a lecture right now and I didn't want to miss anything. So although I can make notes, I just wanted to voice record as I went along. Oh yeah, because I'm already using this. Unfortunately, I'm recording this screen whilst I'm doing this, so I can't actually start a recording here. But if you click on voice recording, it will start recording the area, and then it will match the voice to what you write. So you can see what you were writing when that person was saying what they were saying. Interestingly, they all get tagged, so it can recognize your handwriting. So you've written a whole essay on something um, and you wanna look for a key word. It will recognize your handwriting and allow you to search through your handwriting. 
not just whether it's tight. And that's also true of the voice recording. So it can it can sense what words were said in each voice recording, and you could search through a recording. It's quite powerful. You can add audio files that you made from elsewhere, drawings or text box, etc. You can scan a document in, it will take up the whole page. You can add an image that you have saved, or you could take a fresh image if you press camera, or you can add your PDF page in. So if we just go to click add image, we get an option as to where we're going to take this from. We'll go to gallery. And here's something I created in Canva. We can reshape it, rotate it. And once it's in, draw over it. If you're taking a note of something, you need a picture. I can think of a, a good example where you're in an experiment and you want to take a picture of the setup and annotate it. I've used it in class if I've got a lot to copy, like a whole slide on the PowerPoint, and I'll take a picture of the slides instead of copy them all, that would be really useful, you know, save of time. Um, and it could be really useful as well if you're making a worksheet. So especially in maths where you can't just type the maths, it's really difficult. You can use this to write over the top of worksheets to annotate what to do or show an example just as much as you can in the PowerPoint. So I'm now going to import a file. And the way I do that is I'm going to go back and make a new file. Click import PDF. And uh, without showing you my uh, personal files, <laughs> here is one of the worksheets that I made for Patreon. And you can go over to Patreon and purchase this set. It's Venn Diagrams and Probability. But it's a worksheet with plenty of space so that you can load it into a tablet and you can actually write onto this. In fact, this is the accompanying questions that you can work alongside the lecture with. It's just really cool. Set A contains multiples of 3 between 20 and 32. So clearly we have the um, first number as 21, 24, 27. I'm not going to uh, go and through and write this exactly perfect, but just as it is now, uh, it shows you the idea that you can write on this and move around. You can even change the color of what you've done already. So let's say we wanted it orange instead. You can highlight it orange. Make sure it's the same size as over here. So this is actually 21. So we'll change this to 21. And it won't change the size. There you go. And this could be really useful if you've made it, you want to make an edit rather than write it over again. And you could change the color and mark your work afterwards. And then this worksheet stays in your folder system. You can label it whatever you want, but it's neat and it's clear and you've got it there. You can then easily save it, send it to your tutor, send it to colleagues if you want to collaborate. From the little menu that's on the right hand side, we can change the template. You can go here and change how it scrolls and the background color. But more than that, when you go here, you can actually change the template. So we get a whole set. Clearly, we would want squares or lines for education. We get dotted lines for perspective drawing, calendars, even musical staves. And if that isn't enough, there's a whole host of PDF sets that you can download extra. These will be sets for very specific reasons. So let's take one, for example, here, like a case file. You click on those three dots and you can see what it gives you. We've also got one here, which looks as though it's a set of bookkeeping. Uh, we've got some calendar options, different ones. If I click on one of these now, this is going to, this is going to make me uh, actually have these. So we've got profile. A little bit of jotting. Oh, it looks like a pet profile, right? So this is actually a pet diary. So this is a template somebody's made. And we say, okay, what was the weather today? Um, it was okay. And then we could put the date in 13th, 12th, 23. And, you know, write whatever we want to write. But as we said earlier, you could put your favorite pictures there by adding an image. Like so. And you could take a fresh picture with the camera of your pet live. I know some people, when they first use this, worry about putting their palm down when they write, but it doesn't interfere with it at all. It works so good. So the next thing I want to look at is the Amazon Kindle. You've got sometimes very heavy books that you carry around, and a lot of books are now available in like digital format, especially in the libraries at university. 
it's cheaper for them. Although they still hike the prices up on them because the publisher knows that they have to buy them and it doesn't always end up too much cheaper, but it should be. And so when you've got to carry around all of these books, it's easier if you've got them digitally in one place and that's where Kindle comes in. So this is the Kindle interface and you have many books at A-level. Let's go to S1. So I've got a certain way through and you have the whole book on here that you can look through. You've got your questions. And let's say that there's a really important thing that you want to make a note on. You can select the screen and just save it and copy it through to you know your notes wherever you're working. You can make multiple saves. And then when you import into SNOTE, make multiple selections and it all goes in in one. If you've got a problem you can't solve, let's say you're really stuck on this question, you can select it and immediately share it to you know anyone that you're working with or your tutor, or you could take it straight to SNOTE to try to work on it. And by doing that, it goes straight into it with no fuss. And then away you go. So draw up a table. It's really easy with, with this because it turns those wonky lines straight away nicely into proper lines and you can start to do your work and keep it all in a nice neat place. And this is something I'm telling students all the time. If you come across questions that you can't do, make a note of it. Like uh, in the old days, it was buy a separate notepad. That's a lot of effort. But here, you just open a new folder, start a note, and then just import any questions straight into that note. And you can keep a track of the questions that you need to overcome. It's just a no-brainer, really. Now we're going to speak to the other apps that are on here that would be really useful. We have Google Classroom, Docs and Sheets, Calendar, etc. It works perfectly fine uh, as it does on any device that's Android. You're not going to be held back or slowed down at all. One thing I should say is that I do not always use the keyboard on this screen. And one of the major reasons is because it's difficult to get the angle. I would usually use it as some sort of last resort. And mainly the keyboard I use is an external Bluetooth keyboard. And this keyboard is a Logitech that I will link in the description down below. As I said, the YouTube app is, is obviously very useful for watching T Formula on here for any useful videos that might appear to help and supplement study. We also have the Microsoft Office Suite. This app has come a long way. You can do a lot in here now. So the Microsoft Word on here is actually really advanced. We have a number of different options with our tabs up here, and we could do mostly everything that we can do with the Google Docs, including inserting stuff and sharing it. So it's a good place to start and it's, you know, when you're on the go, you bring your Bluetooth keyboard and there's really not much of a slowdown on your work. Nothing can really be a laptop, but you could definitely pass with the tablet. So this is the app I wanted to show you with regard to taking to-do lists and you just sign up for the account. You click the little plus down in the bottom right and you could type in do maths homework. And you can set a due date and it remind you like a week before, three days before, or like a repetition if it's going to keep happening. And you just click up there and you've got that as a reminder, just very quickly. If you've done it, click that and it's completed. And you'll get a list of completed and, and things that are not completed, essentially. Just a quick generic calendar app, but you could use Google's or Microsoft's that's built in. And you can employ this idea called spaced learning. So you go to a lesson on a particular day and you know that according to neuroscience, you need to re revise it at increasing spaced intervals. And it's all because of the forgetting curve. The fact that one of the memory flaws of the human brain is to slowly forget what it learns. And if you can repeat what you learn, as in revise it, at a particular time, it can bring it back up. And if that repetition occurs a few times, then it can get further and further into your long-term stored memory to a point where you'll never forget it. And it's this little hack, I suppose, that we need to try to find a workaround for. 
And the way to get organized about, about this is to have a lesson on October the 14th, let's say. And knowing you need to revise this in a few days, put a media alert, click here on the 18th, and we'll add, revise, whatever it was. We're saying that we're revising stats. I mean, we want to be a bit more specific, but let's say we revise stats. So we can say we're going to revise that on the 18th. You can set the time, I suppose, it's you know in the evening. I don't know when you want to do it. And then you'll get a reminder. Obviously, you can set a reminder 10 minutes before or a day before, whenever you want, and that will remind you to do it. At the very same time, you should set a reminder for uh, two weeks and then finally for a month. And once you've done that, you should have that much better in your long-term memory. Now, in the introduction, I mentioned an app called Microsoft Math Solver. Here it is. So as you can see, this app has undergone a lot of changes and it's now a bit more sophisticated, but you can type in a problem. You've got your general interface there, which is slower. You can write a problem. So for example, the integral of x squared dx. Let's see if it can recognize this. Ah, and it has. Up at the top left, you can erase it, undo or delete it. But you can make these, you know, these questions up. This is a generic one. So if we add in limits between two and four, for example, it adapts. If I now press up here in the top right to solve, it will solve it. But I want to draw your attention to the scan as well. On the left, you could take a picture of a question you found in a book or one that you write down and it will scan it and do the same thing as what I just did here. I wrote something, take a picture and it will tell you the answer. Let's see what happens when we click the answer to this. It isn't just an answer. As you can see, a calculator does this. The FX991, for example, will do this. But the real diamond here is it gives you similar problems. And I'll be honest, you still need a teacher to tell you because some of these are a little bit, they're not really related. And I feel like a teacher would do a better job. But look at this, view the solutions and see if it's any good. What do you do? You evaluate the indefinite integral with this rule. So it's not just what you do, it's got an explanation as well. And you can arrive at 56 over three. So it's a fairly powerful self-study. You can go here and question why T Formulas series on calculus is not on the suggested sites. And similar problems from web search, if you're looking for practice, uh, etc. So it's a fair amount of good stuff there uh, from this one app. And that could be super useful if you're not even studying maths and you just wanted a little bit of support with the maths without going to someone. Now we're going to take a quick look at Desmos, which is just like GeoGebra. And what we could do here is find very typical graphs already drawn for us from the menu and explore some of these different things. Polar graphs, it does go quite advanced, as you can see. Or if we wanted to draw a graph ourselves, for example, y equals x squared. We know this graph, so it's a good one to choose. We can turn it off, we can turn it on, we can zoom in and zoom out, and we can see what's going on with this graph. You could find coordinates if you just hold your finger down and you can add multiple graphs at the same time to compare what happens transformations or what happens in general like where do they cross over and even have lessons on desmos there's a whole set of optimization lessons and i do believe there's also a set of lessons on modeling which is really good because you're using graphs and seeing how accurate they are to the real world of course we also have github which i'm currently not signed into but if you're doing programming you can definitely use it on here it works really well i don't need to show you what google chrome is but Obviously, it's an Android device, so it works really well. It's your portal to the internet. One thing that we might talk about is, can this device replace your laptop? And in my humble opinion, doing what I do, no. It cannot because I want more advanced features and more processing power than this can give. But it's certainly very close to. And as somebody who really wanted it to replace a full-time laptop, I've been able to mostly replace everything. And everything we talked about so far, it works very well in comparison to a computer, except the office documents. Obviously, it does things that a computer cannot do with SNote. And then there are other things um, such as 
being able to put the windows side by side, uh, running multiple apps at the same time, etc. Fortunately, Samsung has a really good workaround for this, and it's called Dex. So D E X. And I've used Dex a fair amount. It allows you to use a separate Bluetooth mouse, just like you do with Windows. You can have multiple windows up and another benefit, it gives you better posture because you're using a keyboard attached and you could sit up straight. Let's just start up Samsung Dex and have a look at that. So Dex is one of the quick access buttons in the menu. And when you click it, it just takes a bit of time. And now we have our computer with all the things running down the bottom like any typical computer and I certainly have a mouse where I can open certain things. I've got an app area where I can have a look in so I can have different windows open. So let's open a couple of things at the same time and to see what I mean. But we can have our drawer open and Desmos at the same time. We can make it full screen or even minimize it and have capacity change so you can work on top of other things. And it works a lot like a computer now. The way to get out of this mode is very simple, an exit dex mode. But you'll notice that different apps behave slightly differently in this mode and it just becomes easier to multitask. Now, it's not true that you cannot use a mouse outside of dex, <laughs> but you really need a mouse in dex. So I can use this mouse here, just like I was using my finger and a double click will start an app. This is not really uh, optimal. It's much better to use your finger unless you're in Dex mode. You've got your email clients, your Gmail and your Hotmail and your, you know, your Windows Live. Yeah, so after two years of using it, I have 113 gigabytes free. And you've got to bear in mind, I make videos on here. So there's a lot of screen recordings. A uh, fair amount of screen clips. So if I'm selecting questions and then pasting them into an S note for a tutoring session, or I may be uh, storing some media, like some videos, some TV shows, I've got quite a few apps. And then I'm making documents. I'm using OneDrive quite heavily. You know, that may have a big impact. If you go to a shop, and I highly recommend you do before you buy one. Have a look at the size of the fan edition. They are humongous. Uh, there really is a range of screen sizes here, anywhere between 10 inches and maybe even 15, 16 inches, which is larger than some laptops. Here is a selection of tablets and accessories for education, according to me actually using these products. If my budget was on the lower side, and I was only thinking about getting away with the minimum specification, my pick would have to be from the S9 series, the fan edition. And it's still available now, and it's fairly cheap. We're talking around four or 500 pounds, if that. The benefits of this are that it's extremely affordable. It has a very good size screen, and you're able to upgrade the memory by a terabyte. This could be a good option. This will absolutely do the job. Absolutely no worries at all. Now, if you're looking to spend a little bit more because A, you can, or you really want the higher specification for a better experience, then the best one, in my opinion, is the Samsung Tab S9. If you're doing things like graphic design, if you're trying to replace a laptop or a huge TV screen, maybe you go for the S9 Plus or the Ultra. It's very expensive. This S9 is a good compromise for price because it's still sub 1000 pounds and you want just the Wi-Fi. As I said previously, you don't need the 5G. You can tether off of your phone if you need that. And so this will do just fine. It's an AMOLED 2X display with 120 Hertz. So it's a super nice screen, especially if you're gonna use it for not just work. The 128 and 256 gigabyte storage options are complemented with the one terabyte SD card, which could also be used as extra RAM. It's an excellent specification model. Depending on which one you get, which I would recommend the 256 gigabyte, you get 12 gigabytes of RAM. And it's also IP68 dust and water resistant, so it's quite useful. As I said, it's not cheap, but there are a lot of good aspects to this. As a professional, if it was me buying one, this would be the one I would get. 
it won't let you down and it's the one I you I will be using I use the same version in the S7 series there could be a number of reasons why you would want to get a device which is a lot smaller or a lot cheaper and this one comes in at a very reasonable 300 to 400 pounds depending on the model that you get this is the Samsung S6 Lite as you see the X S6 means it's a rather old series but don't let that fool you it's not that old they've kept the name and it's been on the my radar for a long time what I really like about this is there doesn't seem to be much slow down it still uses an S Pen the camera is not the best but it's so portable with a 10.4 inch screen it almost feels like a mobile phone sometimes you have to figure out whether that's good enough for you sometimes people do not like the small screen especially writing on one of the mobile phones with the S Pen because it's very small. In its defense, it's very high resolution. You'll get the same resolution. It's just sort of smaller, right? It's a very reasonable 128 gigabytes of storage. The only thing letting this down is the four gigabytes of RAM. You can upgrade the storage again with a terabyte. So it's, it's very flexible. As far as I've spent hours on this, I haven't seen it slow down. It hasn't been a problem. And, you know, it, I think it's a really good option, uh, um, especially if you've got smaller hands as well. The screen quality is not the best in terms of when you're looking at multimedia or in very bright spaces, but I found it to be good enough if you're in an office type situation and you want to use it for that. Personally, wouldn't be going for this myself unless I wanted something hyper portable. But I want to emphasize that if you're not a professional and you're just a student, especially GCSE or A-level, this is an outstanding choice and going to be really affordable. I mentioned also in a previous video at the beginning of this one, depending on which video you're watching, uh, the idea that there are some Galaxy devices now which are two in one. The Galaxy Book 3 360 is, is an outstanding mix of laptop and tablet. As you can see, it folds over and you can use the S Pen for everything you can that a tablet would, would want it for. But when it folds out, you get this really nice keyboard and it functions fully as a laptop, um, you know, fully Windows laptop. It comes in a couple of different sizes and a really nice AMOLED, super AMOLED display. 512 gigabytes of storage is definitely going to do you very well. Plus, you've got online storage and memory cards. You know, it's a laptop. 16 gigabytes of RAM, Core i7. These things are fast. I fully recommend you go to a store, have a look at them, and just see how good it feels to use these. They are lightning fast, and you're going to be very productive on them. I don't know about you, but when I have a really nice device, it's, it's so encouraging, and I work much better. This device inspires me to work. The downside of this is you won't get something ultra portable, but you will get something that will handle anything. And you've got the other option now, which is the Galaxy Fold Z5. If you're out getting one of these fancy phones anyway, you might consider this one because it comes with S Note. It's something that you cannot overlook these days. I did have the first ever Galaxy Note phone and I got the Note 5 as well. And I found it to be brilliant. The pen stows away inside the phone and you can use it just like you use everything else, like the bigger tablets, but this higher resolution. And it translates just fine if you've got a Samsung account to across different devices. And it could be super useful now with this folding phone, it opens up to be a fairly big screen to whip it out and you know, you've always got it on you. And it could be an option. I really need to make a disclaimer with the phones. At one point in my life, I only had my phone. I thought I could replace my tablet and my personal laptop for a while. I was using it and it was really good with Samsung DeX but because I was using it for everything, the battery ran out very quickly. It overheated um, because I was using it for very intense things for 12 hours at a time, plugged in and charging. You know, it didn't have a rest. The AMOLED display is the same as what you'll find in the S9 series. It's extremely good. Uh, 50 megapixel camera can be useful for you when you're documenting things. And, uh, you know, it's a good storage, 12 gigabytes of RAM. It's essentially a tablet. It's if you want to go down that road. Bear in mind that these are not simple options. They're both very expensive. This Galaxy Fold Z5 is about 1,600 pounds. The Galaxy Book 3 360 is currently 
um, on a good sale. It's uh, usually around 1,300. I think it's down to 1,100. Depends when you catch it, obviously, but they're not cheap options, but they can be economical depending on which option you wanted to go for. They could be um, good for a lifestyle choice. Now we come to this wonderful slim keyboard from Samsung. I'm going to tell it straight, I wouldn't buy any other keyboard cover other than Samsung after my experience with third party keyboard covers and even covers themselves. After having one of the tablets with a cover that had a magnetic anomaly, should we say, that put the S Pen off and caused damage to the screen, and it also didn't really protect from full damage. This Samsung, I've only ever gone for Samsung since, has been absolutely brilliant. You, you know, if it does accidentally fall, it properly protects it. The keyboard works very well with it and it's super slim, made of very high quality and will last. The only downside of this is the price. Like it's very expensive. Currently there's a sale, it was 130, but there's currently a sale so you can get it for 103, something like that, depending on when you catch it, as I said, these sales are when they are at the time of doing this it's pretty good and that's through Amazon um, all the links by the way are in the description okay so you can catch all of these this is a very high price point and you might be tempted by a cheaper one and you might be happy with it especially if you're going not to be too portable like if you're only keeping it as desktop you might be fine without worrying about dropping it and as long as there are no errors you can get some for as cheap as 30 or 40 pounds but I've got to thoroughly recommend this keyboard that goes with it because when you're going to be heavily using dex mode it's much more uh, portable I do have a separate keyboard which I'll look at in a second but this one is if you're going to use it heavily is is a much better choice one day, a few years ago, I was watching a YouTuber talk about their setup and they recommended the Above Tech tablet stand. It looked really good. I, you know, on a whim, I needed one and I thought I would trust this creator. And I, I got to say, no regrets. Didn't look back. It's been an, an outstanding companion for my tablet. And I do have, as I said, the S7. So we're talking like 10 to 12 inches screen would be absolutely fine. It does fit the iPad Pro, as you can see in the picture. We're talking iPads as well. And it, I also use it for my mobile phone. So I want you know something to be playing at the side at eye level rather than looking down and, and ruining my posture, as well as this almost turning it into a monitor, right? So it's really useful for posture. And it twists around, so very quickly, swivel it around to be portrait or landscape and you can put your keyboard underneath it and there's a little space for wires to go through it's it's just brilliant and I, I, I just really recommend it you won't regret buying it if this is the kind of thing that you are looking for in your desktop desktop setup it's going to be really useful this comes in at around 30 35 pounds depending on where you're going to go for it the Logitech K380 keyboard is wonderful <laughs> i really enjoy typing on this the keys feel great it's very durable and portable and it lasts forever you put two AAA batteries in and i haven't replaced the batteries in six months maybe to a year and it's still going strong and this is an all-in-one it connects three devices at once okay as you can see those buttons on the top very quickly will switch between whatever device i currently have it on my laptop so i can operate uh, movies from my sofa or media center. I have it on my phone for if I'm trying to type better uh, in an email or on the go um, and also for my tablet obviously for word processing and desktop replacement. So it's it's a fantastic all-rounder that it will be multifunctional and it just feels great to type on. I can talk about it forever. It's relatively cheap coming in at around 45 pounds. I've got a really good price on Amazon if you follow the links in the description but it's an option if you're happy to keep it separate which I am because I don't want the keyboard attached to the tablet if I have it on my stand and I'm watching at a distance um, I like to have that freedom to have it on my lap to move it away and be adjustable so you could I guess decide how you want to play that but this could be probably one of the best keyboards out there. And the last noteworthy mention will be the Logitech MX Anywhere 2S. I've had this for a long time. Uh, you use it to play Fortnite. You can see it's got two buttons on the side for edits 
uh, and building. It's got a click scroll and the scroll is very quick for resetting edits, for example. And the main draw to this is that it's a good price point. It's made by a good brand and it's very reliable. The reason why it's called Anywhere is it boasts the fact that it works on any surface. It will work on your lap. It will work with interference on rough surfaces, messy surfaces, and you won't notice any problem. It truly is an all-rounder. It's highly portable. The battery life lasts for probably about three weeks on any charge, but you can plug it into your PC via USB and keep using it. So it's, it's you're never really out of action. And this can connect to three devices at once. That's what's so good about it. On the bottom, there's a little button that you press that switches between uh, three different devices. So I've currently got it connected to my computer. That's for obviously computing and gaming. I've got it to my tablet, which is for when I turn it to dex mode. And thirdly, I've got it to my work laptop. So three different functions and it's just, you take it everywhere with you and you can always connect hardwire or to a new device very easily at any time. So I hope you found that really useful. Uh, for all the years I've been using these devices, I thoroughly endorse and have used very well in the setting as a teacher, as, an, as somebody who's learning, as a student, uh, and, and just for, for fun and personal use. And the accessories, you could trust them. And here's to the future of education and technology.